Hello everyone. Hope everybody's having a good week. Happy Tuesday. My name is Britt Fallon. I'm the beauty director with New Beauty Magazine. We are going live with Jan Marini, who is the founder and chairman of the board for Jan Marini Skin Research. And she has been called the queen of skincare by many of her clients and fans. Um, so we are so excited to go live with her. Hi, Jan. Hi, Britt. How, How are you? you? I'm good. I'm, I'm excited to be here. So uh, you are the founder and chairman of the board for Jan Mar Marini Skin Research, which is the brand that you started. Um, and I was telling everyone while we were waiting for you to join that you have been called the queen of skincare uh, by many of your clients and fans. And, you know, you've been a, a longstanding partner of ours at New Beauty and supporter of, of us. And we're just so grateful and so happy to work with people like you. So thank you. Oh, thank you. What a nice thing to say. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, I, there's a lot to cover, a lot to get to. Um, so, you know, I want to dive right in. And what I would love to hear more about, and I think a lot of other people watching are very interested in hearing a little bit about your background, is that you're a product researcher and you have been for 40 years. And I want to know what exactly is a product researcher and what, what do you do? Well, you know, I, I kind of came up with the term product researcher because it was really, at the time, the only way that I could describe what it is that I do. And maybe it'll be a little clearer if I talk just a little bit about my background. Yeah. I have been a product researcher for well over 40 years, but in the beginning, my expertise is really in the area of ingredients. And, you know, you pick up a skincare product. And you see that list of ingredients that's intimidated and, and, and mysterious. And how do you know if something is really going to help your acne or make it worse? Isn't it really going to help your discoloration or your fine lines and wrinkles? And so I did a lot of lecturing to physicians and medical professionals and skincare professionals. And I also did a lot of radio and television because it lends itself really well to talk shows. And people love to hear about ingredients. They want to know what they should spend their money on. But as time went on, I developed associations with physicians and researchers literally all over the world. And more and more, I started to focus on uncovering and identifying breakthrough technologies. Now, Britt, I have to qualify that word because anytime somebody comes out with a product, do they ever refer to it as anything but a breakthrough? Right. <laughs> and has anybody ever told you that they have the second best product? <laughs> so no. really, what I'm talking about are things that hadn't been in the marketplace before. Um, to give you an example, I began researching glycolic acid back in the early to mid 80s. Now you couldn't walk into a department store or drugstore. It didn't exist commercially. And, but you could get it for cleaning stains off your driveway or grease <laughs> out of car engines. And then um, around 1989 going into 1990, I founded and brought to market the two product lines, MD Formulations and MD Forte. And then in 1994, founded Jam Rooney Skin Research. So we're going in our 26th year. Wow. I mean, literally on July 1st, 1994, I took down the MD formulation sign and put up the Jam Rooney Skin Research sign. Oh my gosh. You know, you've told me, and we, we spoke a little bit before this about how you have a warehouse of products and I need to hear more about this. So you actually keep this warehouse and how long have you had it? And how often do you refer to the products in it? Well, I probably exaggerate a little bit. It would probably be a, a, a small warehouse. Okay. But over the years, I like researching virtually everything in the marketplace. I want to really keep abreast of what the trends are and what people are saying about products. And sometimes, you know, the marketing and the things that you hear can be very seductive, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the product is actually going to do that. And I, I also like to look at textures and viscosity. It's really helpful for me if I'm thinking of developing something and I'm thinking, do I want it to be more of a serum or a gel or a cream viscosity and being able to actually touch and feel something helps me to more fully describe it or formulate to that thickness or that viscosity. And also, um, way back when, I didn't have an internet to go to where I could look at ingredient listings. Right. So I would keep these products around because I'm constantly referring to ingredient listings and I'm constantly sort of researching claims and some of the, the trendy ingredients, buzzwords. So what do you think is the oldest product you have in there? Well, actually, um, I go back to where, uh, I'm sure you guys have all heard of creme de la mer. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Well, I go back to many years before Max Uber, the scientist that invented it, before he died, and before he ever got into the first store, which was iMagnon, and he was actually selling his product because he couldn't get it into department stores at that time. He was selling it through a woman by the name of Betty Franklin, who was the beauty writer for Prevention Magazine, and it was called Cream of the Sea. Hmm. And yeah. I still have one of those original jars. Wow, wow, that's so cool. I bet you have a lot of really good stuff in there. I, would, I actually, like, my wheels are turning now. I'm like, I kind of want to get in there and do like, a video with you, <laughs> <laughs> looking at all the ingredient labels. So, you know, one of the things that I learned about you too is that you struggled with acne when you were younger and you actually did a couple rounds of Accutane. Um, and I know there's a lot of people out there that can relate to that. Is that one of the driving forces behind creating your own skincare? Well, actually, no. But I will say it's definitely a motivation for developing product that addresses adult acne. You know, it's interesting because the media always asks me. They always say, Jan, what inspires you? What motivates you? Why do you read all the medical journals? Why do you do all the research and development? And I give the same answer every single time. I'm really selfish. I do it for me. I don't want adult acne. And I don't want rosacea and I don't want discoloration and hopefully I'd like to stave away fine lines and wrinkles as long as possible. And I don't really think that I'm any different than any of the people that are tuning in because we all want the same thing. We want beautiful skin. And do you know that the average woman has over $600 in product in her bathroom she doesn't use? Wow. I always say, I don't want another product. I want a solution. So I'm always looking for solutions. And I always, I find, let, let's say that, that you have acne and you clear up your acne. Well, what if you have discoloration? Well, now the discoloration becomes just as concerning as the acne once it's. It's really about getting the skin to that middle point where you feel like your skin is perfected. Mm -hmm. And you feel like you don't have to wear foundation. And I, I have to tell you, I'm rarely ever a foundation where I'm not wearing it today. And everybody wants to get to that point yeah. where you feel like you're not just covering something. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's the, that's the goal. And I think now we're even seeing that with these really, really light tinted sunscreen. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's also helping eliminate some of the um, extra layering of makeup. And uh, that's kind of, you know, what I've been looking to and loving lately. Your brand is really based on, Jan Rini Skin Research is really based on, um, hard data, scientific review, peer-reviewed studies. I mean, you really are, you have stacks of journals on your desk at all times. And that's what makes it so amazing. You're not just chasing the latest trend. You really are chasing the hard facts and looking at the data. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about this brand ethos? It, you know, again, it's really about solutions. And so many times you see a product mm. that makes a lot of claims and it's very seductive. But is it really going to address your specific concern? And I always say to people, the one thing, and when I do a consultation, I do consultations with a lot of celebrities, a lot of physicians, very famous physicians. And I always ask the same question every single time. If there was something you could change or improve about your skin, what would it be? And people typically will tell me their number one concern. And then I'll say, well, what else would you like to change or improve? And they'll give me three or four concerns. You really want to focus on something that is actually going to address those concerns and that has some data behind it mm -hmm. that can really demonstrate that your, your, your money is well spent. Right. So you were also one of the first brands to be sold in doctor's offices way back when, when this was kind of an unheard of thing to do. And now you go into a doctor's office and you see like a whole shelf full of five brands. So how did that all start for you? I have to tell you, this is my fourth company. And that was the most difficult time I have ever had in a career. Because back then, physicians weren't dispensing product out of their office, and they were absolutely horrified. They were incensed. Now, it made perfect sense to me. How many times have you gone to a dermatologist, as an example, and said, well, doctor, what products can I use that will enhance or that will work well with my acne medication mm -hmm. or any of the other concerns that you might have. And so many times a physician will say, well, back in the day, they used to say things like, well, Vaseline will work just as well as anything. 
So, right. you know, it makes sense to have something that's compatible with various therapies and topical agents. Mm -hmm. But even though it was a great idea, I have to tell you that one of the factors that really played a role in making it take off was managed health care. Mm. So if you all remember back then, managed health care first came onto the scene and physicians were really hit hard because let's just say, for example, that you had a doctor that was charging 60 or $65 for an office visit. Mm. Now he's getting $15. He or she is making far less and they still have to pay the staff the same and they still have to pay the same rent. So it gave them a way to capture discretionary income, but also as time went on, they realized that there were technologies out there that they really could endorse and that could make a significant difference in someone's skin. So you're in dermatologist's office, plastic surgeon's office, right? All across the country and your products are also online and really around the globe, right? Yes. Now, you know, what is our marketplace? Well, our marketplace is what we call the professional market. And that means we, you won't see us in Nordstrom's. You're not going to see us in Sephora's or Target or places like that. So it has to be in appropriately licensed facilities. And that could be a physician's office, not necessarily a, a core physician, plastics and derms, but there are other physicians who carry the products as well. It could be in a Medi Spa. And it also could be with a licensed skincare professional, now many of whom are working in many spas or physician offices. Right. Okay. So I want to talk a little bit about glycolic acid because you really were one of the pioneers of glycolic acid in skincare. Um, so what are the benefits to using this ingredient? And um, why, like, how do you use it in your products that might be different from, from other brands? That's a great question. What are the benefits? Do you know, Britt, that of the, in all the ingredients, the cosmetic ingredients in the entire world, there are two that have been studied medically more than any others. And I'm talking about histological studies, biopsies, I mean, in-depth studies. Mm -hmm. One is re the retinoids, mm -hmm. and the other one is glycolic acid. Hmm. And glycolic acid, I mean, we could, we could spend two hours just talking about yeah. glycolic acid, but it has so many benefits for the appearance of aging skin, fine lines and wrinkles, the appearance of acne scarring, making skin brighter. Doctors use it on ichthyosis, which is a dry skin disease. They use it on mild to mild, moderate psoriasis. It's used in acne. Now at the simplest level, what it does is it dissolves and dislodges the glue-like substance or cellular cement between the cells. Mm -hmm. it causes them to lift off without being abrasive. So it resurfaces the skin. And one of the things I always talk about is resurfacing. That's what perfects your skin. You want it to right. look, you know, really glassy. And so it addresses the appearance of mild to moderate acne mm -hmm. or large pores, texture, fine lines. It makes the skin look a lot brighter. But also inside your follicle, because it has a very tiny molecule, you can actually get in there, dissolves and dislodges the glue -like substance or cellular cement, and so it helps to get rid of what we call follicular retention. That's the beginning of the acne process. Mm -hmm. But also, when you get rid of that, it really makes your follicles look nice and small and your texture really refined. Now, one other thing, chemically, glycolic acid is actually categorized as a moisturizer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when we look at aging, roughly 50% of what we think is inevitable aging is loss of volume. People always say to me, they said, Jan, I don't know. I woke up one morning and I looked in the mirror and like somebody took the air out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so you have these substances in your skin that give you volume and also just make it look nice and plump mm -hmm. and soft and smooth. They're known as glycosaminoglycans, but they're made up of things you've heard of, hyaluronic acid, mucopolysaccharides, yeah. ceramides, phospholipids. Well, it actually can stimulate those things. Hmm. It's been shown to stimulate collagen. Now, when you say, what is different about our product? Well, number one, I think really, if you're going to use um, a glycolic acid product, you want as little of anything else in there as possible. You just want the formula to be a vehicle for it. Right. And the second thing, what we know from studies and medical conferences is that for it to really have these benefits for home care use, has to be at a pH of around 3.25. Okay. And most products aren't. So are all of your products um, pH 
like transparent? Do you tell everybody about that? Because I think people, I think consumers are getting more savvy into pH now. Well, if they ask me, but there's a lot of misconception there because a lot of times we've been told, well, you want to have something to be pH balanced. Right. So to give you an idea, glycolic acid for home care needs to be right around that range of 3.25. But retinol, on the other hand, has to be around five or so. Liposoluble C has to be around six. And that gets into a whole other issue about yeah. why certain things aren't compatible in the same formula. So it's not about, you know, your skin pretty much regardless of what you do to it, unless it's something that's really harmful, within about 20 minutes, it goes back to your normal pH, whatever it is for you. Right. What are your thoughts on those products that say they do 10 things in one? You know, the serums that list 10 different benefits. Uh, I have a feeling I know what you're going to say, but I definitely want to hear. Well, you know, it is so seductive because you, you, you know, it, the, the idea is that, oh, you only need one product. And it's just going to do everything. Yeah. Well, I'm here to tell you it is not <laughs> possible. <laughs> okay. So the first thing is, so I'm going to sit down and I'm going to do a formula. Now, in every single formula, to one degree or another, you're going to have at least 50% or more water. Because mm -hmm. you can't bake a cake without liquid. So 50% is water. Now you have to have a certain number of stabilizers. You don't want to open up the jar and have it look like it's all separated and mushy. Right. And you have to have binding agents and you have to have spreading agents and emollients to one degree or another, because depending on the viscosity of the product, mm -hmm. now I put my actives in. So what if I need 10% of this and 5% of that? Well, I'm going to run out of room. But that's okay, because I'll just put in little tiny amounts of the ingredients. It looks great on the label. And I'll charge as much money, and nobody will know the difference. I'll still make the same claims. So our products are really expensive to make. Mm -hmm. And they have the appropriate amount of the, the active topical. Okay, then the next thing is, and we just kind of touched on this. So you see so many times where somebody says, well, they have glycolic in the product and they have retinol and they have lipoic acid and on and on and on. They're not compatible. They'll render each other inactive. Mm -hmm. So you have to separate out those ingredients because they need oftentimes a different pH. Right. Or they may need a different manufacturing process. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, that's, it's, it's so smart. And I think that we are all looking for things that will streamline our routine and make it easier. So people are looking for that, you know, 10 in one magic bullet. But what you're saying is, is, you know, it, it, it makes sense. It, it is the right thing. So um, I love that. Um, so I want to branch off of the ingredient label conversation. And you know, you are a whiz at ingredient labels. And I want to know, are there any red flags or tips that, um, you know, consumers should know or people should look for when reading an ingredient label? I, you know, ingredient labels are tricky. They're even tricky for me because sometimes an ingredient that we would commonly call like green tea, as an example, will have an entirely different name. Right. And they've come up with what are called inky names, international name, name and cloture. Nomencl I'm not even going to say it right. But what this is, is that when you export products, everybody goes by the same name. Mm -hmm. And so that they're able to evaluate whether or not it meets the, the health ministry standards to be able to be exported. Mm -hmm. And so it's really difficult. And so there's really two things that I look for. If you're looking for a particular ingredient, other than, say, a peptide, but if it's, say, glycolic acid or something, you want to see it toward the top of the label. That's one thing. Yeah. The second thing is, and I'll go back to, you need to ask yourself what it is you want to change or improve. Mm -hmm. And then look for some type of validating data that is going to establish some type of a baseline, something that really says, yes, this product works. And as an example, we've had five studies published in a peer-reviewed medical journal, the Journal of Dug Drugs and Dermatology. Mm -hmm. So... I'm not going to go and do clinical studies on a body scrub, right? but if it's something that is a therapeutic product for acne or for redness associated with rosacea, we're going to do a lot of validative work on that. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
you know, you said you had five peer reviewed studies published. That's more than any other skincare brand in the world, right? As far as I know. That's amazing. I mean, I, I just want everyone to realize, you know, how important that is um, to a skincare brand and how much that means to us at New Beauty, because we're always diving into the science behind these products. Um, so, you know, I, I also know that Cher is a fan of your products and has said that she's a fan. And I want to know, um, have, did you ever have a consultation with her or how did she get your products? I mean, this, that's like fabulous. That's a great endorsement. Oh my gosh. Well, let me tell you the share story. Okay. So this goes way back. Now, remember when, and I, I um, Celine was not playing Vegas for a while. She took a break. And so they brought Cher in. I think she was going to be there for like a year. And at the time she was around 67 or 68 years old, so a few years ago. And because she was going to play Vegas and she hadn't toured for a long time, she was on all of the talk show programs. Mm -hmm. And I believe it was Entertainment Tonight. She was being interviewed by her former boyfriend who kiss, um, Gene Simmons. Yeah. And so uh, it was pre-recorded, and apparently Gene was sitting there and saying, well, Sherry, you look so great. Why is it you look so young? It's like you've never changed. And she said, well... I owe my skin to Jan Marini. So before it aired, I get a phone call <laughs> and they said, we'd like to send a film crew to San Jose because Cher just mentioned you. And so we want to, you know, get, a, get an interview with you. And so once I knew she was using the product, we actually reached out and connected. Yes, I did do her consultation. Wow. And, um, and also, you know, work a lot with her assistant who, by the way, sounds exactly like Cher on the phone. <laughs> it's, it's, you can't tell the difference. And, um, and so over the years, um, we've continued to modify her program and upgrade it, and she continues to work with the products. That was, that's so neat. I mean, I can't even imagine what that must have been like, but that's, that's a huge endorsement uh, for the brand. So that was a little, I, I digress. That was like a personal, I wanted to know that story. Um, <laughs> so that was just for me. But um, back to skincare and skincare labels. So um, you are a big fan of layering technology. And this is something that I really want to get into because it's, it's core to your brand. Um, and, you know, we have uh, one of your products has won our new beauty award 10 years in a row and we're celebrating our 10 year anniversary. So basically since the new beauty awards existed, um, your skincare management system has won our uh -huh. award. Here. Uh, it is a fabulous product and it's based on this notion of layering technology. So I would love to know if you could explain what that is and how you created this product. So thank you so much. And you know, layer technology is a term that I use because as, as I talked about before, you can't put everything in one product. Mm -hmm. So when you segregate out these technologies and you put them into specific products, you're able to really retain the benefits, the efficacy. Mm -hmm. And there are five products in the skincare management system, but um, it, it's really something where at the, at the end of the system, you feel like you maybe have two products on your face. Right. But again, it's done in such a way in which we can keep everything segregated so that there's really this, the, the best benefits that we can possibly provide. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that people always say to me, they say, but Jan, if we have different concerns, how can we all be on the same system? And I answer that by talking about one particular product, if you don't mind. Now, this is, mm -hmm. this is BioClear. This is step three in the system. So BioClear is a combination of glycolic, salicylic, and azelaic acid. Mm -hmm. Now, azelaic acid is sold by prescription for acne. It's sold by prescription for rosacea. Mm -hmm. It's also one of the best resurfacing agents I've ever seen for the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles and just the texture of the skin. And it, it brightens skin. At one time, way back when, stubborn pigmentation, they would use higher percentages of azelaic acid for, for lifting. Then you have glycolic. And we talked a little bit about glycolic, but it is it just such an amazing versatile ingredient, whether a person has acne whether a person wants their skin to look more refined, whether they're addressing fine lines and wrinkles or brightening. And everybody knows about salicylic acid. And salicylic acid is also great for acne, but it brightens the skin and it can smooth the texture of the skin. So when you put those three together, I have never seen a product in 40 years that resurfaces better and addresses so many different concerns, regardless of what your primary concern is, Everybody 
notices a huge benefit when they use that product. So that's an example of how we could all be on the same system. And it's an example of layer technology. That product is specifically made to be able to incorporate those acids. And if you look at the product, the ingredient listing, there's really nothing else in there except what holds it together. Right. So if you had to, um, you know, tell people to, if they're going to splurge on one skincare product in their routine, would it be a resurfacer? Do you think that's Well, if you're looking for something that is going to address conditions, I would say yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. But if you said to me, what's the one product you absolutely have to use, it would be sunscreen. Right. Okay. But if you're going to say, let's say that you already have a cleanser and a sunscreen, but you want to splurge on like a, an anti-aging active, you would say a resurfacer mm -hmm. would be the best place to go. I, I would say that you're going to get the, the most, the greatest number of benefits and be able to address a number of different concerns if you have a product that has multi acids in it. When I held up this system, that is our normal combo system. Mm -hmm. And that addresses the, the biggest segment of the population. Because right. most people are gonna be somewhat dry, somewhat normal combination, but we also make a dry skin system, exactly the same actives, but it's more emollient. So this came out of the normal combo system. Mm -hmm. And so just to clarify for everybody, so this is the um, normal combination skin, and then mm -hmm. there's another five-piece kit that um, is for dry skin. Yes. And the question always comes up, well, what about if I have all over really oily skin? Mm -hmm. Well, we have specific technical or specific topical agents and specific products for that as well. How long should you let each product soak in before you apply the next? You can go run one right after the other. Because you were mentioning earlier, and I have heard this from other people, that with certain ingredients, you might, you know, some people say, oh, after applying vitamin C, you wait 20 minutes to let your pH kind of like even out and then apply the next one. But you're saying that's not really. No. Important. Where the incompatibility comes is when they're sitting in a product together. Mm -hmm. And very rapidly, if the pHs are not compatible, or maybe the product in certain cases is, is um, very susceptible to sunlight or oxygen. It breaks down and you just don't have the activity. So in the kit, I just want, I think I've seen some questions too about the cleanser. So this is the first step. It's the bioglycolic, mm -hmm. sorry, the sun is shining bright. Um, bioglycolic the, facial cleanser. <laughs> and I've seen some people asking how long to leave this on before rinsing off. It's just like any other cleanser. I'll tell you the question I get asked all the time is, hey, but Jan, why do you put it on dry skin? So if you've ever taken and put oil on the back of your hand and put water on it, the water just beads up. So we want the cleanser to come in direct contact with oil and makeup and whatever you have on your skin and just work it around really well. Get in all the little nooks and crannies and work it around. Then you can use all the water you want. But I recommend taking a washcloth using tepid water and wringing it out and then using it to gently remove the cleanser, but you can kind of buff a little bit. It gets all the little dead skin cells. And then you have the second step is the Siesta face serum. And I want to ask you a little bit about, um, so each step you have glycolic in here, you have vitamin C in here. If in this five steps, what are the key actives that you have in case somebody isn't able to purchase this system and wants to try to replicate the five steps in their own routine? The Siesta. Mm -hmm. Uh, is, of course, you know, that you would call that a vitamin C product, which is legitimate. But actually, if I took the vitamin C out, it would still be extraordinary because it has something in it called DMAE, dimethylamyl ethanol. And what that's believed to do is to cause what's called muscle shortening at the neuromuscular junction. Mm -hmm. So it's a precursor to acetylcholine, major chemical messenger, and it just causes the skin to look tighter and firmer and more contoured. And this was actually from a study that was presented at the American Academy of Dermatology, half face, double blind, random placebo. It's not a film former. So today we see a lot of advertisements on TV and they put a product on and all of a sudden the person's bag goes away in the first five minutes. Yep. And those are products where there's a, there's a, you spread something over the skin and as it drives, it kind of contracts and it contracts a little bit with the skin. But as soon as you wash your face, mm -hmm. it goes away. 
Right. And this is, so this is actually something that's a little bit different. It's also a very powerful antioxidant. So does DMAE, does this vitamin C boost the effects of DMAE? Like if they're put in no, a- No, they're actually two separate things, but they work very well together. One of the okay. reasons why you, we, we have vitamin C in products today mm -hmm. is because we need vitamin C to make collagen. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. Now, it doesn't do much good to put it on topically if you can't get it into the skin or the skin doesn't recognize it. Right. But in studies that were done before vitamin C ever came on into the marketplace, and one of the reasons why physicians had such interest in it is because it, it showed in studies that it could actually help to stop the sunburn cell and the cascading effect. Mm -hmm. What they found in one of the studies is if you put vitamin C on your skin, you know, day and night, just like you would with any skincare product, and you did it for three days. And then if you stopped for the next three days, you actually had sun protection. Hmm. Now, don't stop wearing your sunscreen. Right. That's a, <laughs> that's a study. But there's just a lot of benefits with vitamin C. Mm -hmm. And it just depends on, because there's more than one type of vitamin C, and it depends on the vitamin C being able to really have those attributes. Mm -hmm. So what about retinol? Where does that fit into this routine? Oh, retinol is truly a game changer. Mm -hmm. And retinol is so important because, it, and just to give you an example of the studies that have been done on retinoids over the year, what you want to do is, as you age, you want to thin your stratum corneum. If people say to me, but Jan, won't I thin my skin? I have a sarcastic answer. I say, I hope so. So you want a really thin, <laughs> compact stratum corneum because you want it to look like a child's skin right? Refined pores, but you want a really thick dermis because your dermis is 80% collagen. And when you get into your 60s, you can have lost well over half of your collagen. So you want it to be nice and thick. So what retinoids do is number one, they thin and compact the stratum corneum. They thicken the dermis. They can actually grow new blood vessels near the surface. And I'm not talking about the bad ones like with rosacea, but those little microvascular um, vessels that give the skin that vibrant look and that just make it look healthier and it makes it look younger. We know it's the gold standard for acne. Right. We know that over time it can even out, make the skin look so much more uniform. Mm -hmm. And it, retinoids can even change gene expression. Yeah. I mean, they can actually reverse some of the damage that's been programmed into your DNA. And by the way, everybody out there, most of the damage you're going to see in your lifetime occurred before the age of 10. It was programmed into your DNA from sun exposure. And at least 50% before the age of 20. It takes 10, 20, 30 years to show up. So here's something that can actually reverse some of that damage. So it's not, there aren't retinoids in these five products though, right? Um, no. So but we have, have to add that in. Yes. Because okay. for example, um, it depends on what your concern is. Let's say, say right. for example, that your primary concern was discoloration, which by the way, every single person on the face of the earth will have abnormal pigment by the age of 35. Wow. So, or, or you'll have what's called background pigment. So let's say that that's one of your concerns or you just want your skin to look brighter. Well, then we make a product that works on the brightening. It's been presented in the Journal of Drugs and Dermatology, but also it has the retinoid in it. These are for every day, right? So you don't exist some, there are a lot of people who can't tolerate a retinoid every day. So well, one of the other reasons behind that. I love that you brought that up about tolerating retinoids because um, this, is, this is a technology. And by the way, my vice president of R&D, Dr. Saxena, is one of the more foremost retinoid experts in the world today, and he put Retin-A Retin Micro through the FDA. So we were able to formulate something that is aggressive, but in the study, roughly 76% of all patients did not have any acclimation. And then about 24% might have a slight bit of maybe a little bit of, of redness initially or a little bit of flaking, which is easily managed by just starting out every other night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think buffering is, is, you know, a method that a lot of people use too. So I think you can, you know, you can put on an oil afterwards. Actually, that's a question I had too. 
So there isn't an oil in this line. What is your what are your thoughts on oils? Well, I, I think it's a matter of preference, but I haven't seen personally any data or anything that's really compelling to me that um, an oil is something that is really going to make a difference specifically in a certain skin concern. Okay. If, for example, you're using an oil because your skin is dry, usually what's happening is you are experiencing what's called increased corneocyte cohesion. So that this is a dead layer of the skin. Mm. And as you age, and you shed about, you shed about 500 million cells a day, they're just microscopic, you don't notice it. But as you age, these cells, which should lay like a shingle on a, on a roof or fish scales, they get very disorganized. And they don't have the same substances in between them that make the skin, give the skin good barrier function. So um, what happens is, is you wash your face and you have this dead layer. And at first, it feels all nice and soft, but wait 20 minutes, don't put anything on it and all of a sudden it's tight and dry, that's called increased corneocyte cohesion because those dead cells have cornified, they harden and they shrink. So when you put an oil or a moisturizer over the top, what you're doing is you're wetting them back down, they temporarily feel better, but you haven't done anything to really address the issue. It's just interesting because there's like a massive oil trend happening right now and people are layering oils and that's like the number one thing that they're you know relying on for that hydration. So. You know, that's really good advice. Um, well, you know, and an oil can be helpful. For example, if you do everything you need to do with the skin and you want an oil right. for barrier function at the end, yes. Okay. Yeah, I think a lot of people use it as the last step to kind of lock in everything that they put on mm -hmm. underneath. So that makes sense. Um, but so the other thing I want to mention, Britt, is, is, is that even though oils have, are having a moment and, you know, they're, they're, they certainly can have some good ingredients in them, you have to be so careful if you tend to break out. And adult acne is an epidemic today among women in their 20s, 30s, 40s, and beyond. Is there a huge difference in the transformative face cream and the age intervention face cream? And I want to ask this because the transformative face, transformation face cream is step four in the kit. Mm -hmm. So what would you say about that question? Okay, well, that's kind of, you know, put that in the category of a moisturizer. Mm -hmm. And I use the term moisturizer um, loosely because it's really a vehicle for more technology. So we were the first company in the world to ever have transforming growth factor beta one. And actually Dr. Weedo of Jefferson University was very involved in some of the studies way back when. And he actually said in an interview, this was just a thing to keep the skin young indefinitely. And apparently he determined that it stimulates a type of collagen you don't produce after the age of 30. And then I have a patent in there also, which is my own patent. And this is, um, this is I, I held quite a few patents, but this is something called thymus and beta-4. Comes from, the, it was discovered in the thymus of cattle. It's in every cell in your body, um, but red blood cells. And it really has a, a marvelous way of being able to help address certain factors and functions that have to do with the aging process. Hmm. Wow, okay. Um, so you have two serums, you have a cleanser, two serums, and then or a lotion and a serum, and then you have a moisturizer and a sunscreen. So would you say that that's about the standard that you'd recommend for an average skincare routine is to have like layer two things before your moisturizer and then sunscreen? Or is it different for everybody? Well, no, because everybody, you know, when I do all these consultations, and it doesn't matter if I'm talking with, you know, a famous physician or a celebrity, Everybody starts with the system. Doesn't matter what their concern is. That's a starting point. And usually people are going to notice a real difference. I mean, within just the first few days because they're resurfacing the skin and there's other, uh, also other elements in there and peptides and a lot of other things that we, you know, some of the things we've talked about. But then you have to say beyond that, if you get to a certain level of skin rejuvenation, what is it that you want to address? Maybe you have more consistent acne. Maybe you have discoloration. Maybe you have redness associated with rosacea. So you want to then select something that's targeted specifically at that. Okay. And you can mix and match all of these technologies. Okay. So this is a good, it's a good starting place. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, somebody just wrote in that Meghan Markle uses Siesta Face Serum for the Markle Sparkle. Are you aware of that? I am. You know, I think this was actually started just before she got married. 
um, she was asked about her skin care routine and apparently she mentioned that. Oh, that's amazing. I mean, I think everything she touches somehow turns to gold. <laughs> so it's another um, major endorsement to you. Um, somebody is asking, um, how about the booster product? Will you please ask Jan about it? I would love to learn more. I've seen this question from a couple people. This is a product that really helps to address the appearance of aging. It's like the next step. So somebody's on the system and they say, now what else can I do? And it was actually based on, this goes back quite a few years ago when the Nobel Scientific Prize was awarded to three scientists for their work on telomeres, telomerase, uh, aging and longevity. And my research started well before then. So really just to, not to get too technical, but telomeres come off the end cap of your DNA. Mm -hmm. They look like shoelaces. And the end of it is a, the telomerase enzyme. It looks like the end of a shoelace. And what happens is as we age, your telomeres get really sh start to get shorter and shorter. And not to be depressing, but when they get really short, well, it's kind of lights out. Now that telomerase enzyme has a lot to do with stabilizing it and a lot to do with protecting the telomere. It has a lot of chromosomal material, et cetera, in it. And also... Um, your telomeres can shorten temporarily if you're going through a really bad illness or you're having under a lot of stress, but you can do things with lifestyle to kind of cause them to lengthen a bit again. So I was reading a very obscure study, and this was years ago, and they had soaked skin cells in telomerase enzyme, and they never aged. Well, I, I still, every time I say that, I get, I get chills. <laughs> And now, of course, I can't keep you from aging, but this was what the technology was kind of based on. And we actually have a patent ingredient called cyclostrogenol, which, and, and we've got peptides and growth factors and a lot of other things in the product, but that, that has this ability to ad address this issue. So there's one booster? You have one booster. Yeah, it's just called Age Intervention Regeneration Booster, but that's a mouthful, so we just call it Booster. Okay, that makes sense. And you just, you put it on, if you're going to add that into a program, you would just put that on day and night like you would any other product. Okay. Before anything specific? Before or after anything? That's specific? the only product that we recommend putting on before siesta. Okay. So the, the routine is, if you're using a medication that your doctor's prescribed, of course, that goes first. But... Other than that, the only thing that goes before siesta is our booster product. Okay, so after cleansing, booster, mm -hmm. siesta. Right. Okay. So how long should people allow um, their use of products before they should see results? What, what do you think is a fair waiting time? Okay. Here's the great thing. When you're resurfacing the skin, you can see results literally in the first day or two. And I hear that all the time. People say, am I imagining it? because your skin is going to look smoother, brighter right away. And you're kind of normalizing cell turnover and get, getting rid of all that increased corneocyte cohesion. Mm -hmm. If you have acne, if you have redness associated with rosacea, if you have discoloration, that's gonna be more progressive. And if you're using a product like Duality for acne, as an example, mm -hmm. you can have very fast results. People can stop breaking out within the first week. Wow, okay. So what about with the kit? How long do you give that? How long do these, does the kit, the products in the kit last? About six to eight weeks. Okay. And then after the kit, you kind of reassess the skin and how it's reacting and then create another regimen after that? Well, what you, you always stay on the system. That never changes. Oh. But, but what you want to determine is, do I need to add in something that's going to specifically address acne? Now, a lot of people who go on the system notice that their skin is much clearer. Mm -hmm. And if it's, if it's very mild acne, that may literally take care of it. Mm -hmm. But if somebody has concerns, more concerns with acne, somebody has concerns with redness associated with rosacea, if somebody discoloration, they want to brighten the skin, they want to create that uniformity, then those are things that you add to the system. Okay. What about eye cream? I get a lot of questions about eye cream. And I feel like people... They use it, they give it like two weeks, and then if it's not working, they're on to the next. And they're very quick to throw something out if they don't like the texture. What are your thoughts on eye cream and how long should you give it to, to really work? I think you have to be really realistic. So first of all, uh, my favorite product in terms of the eye products is our Luminate Eye Gel. 
Mm -hmm. That's a good product. Thank you. Now, the reason is, is first of all, a lot of concerns focus on dark circles. Mm -hmm. And people used to say to me, well, Jan, what do I do for dark circles? And I had a sarcastic answer, pick your parents. (laughs) But today we do have technology that doesn't just disguise them, but really can help with the appearance of dark circles. Mm -hmm. The second thing is, is that the lines that are kind of underneath the eye and when the eye area gets crepey, there's a retinoid in there and it makes a huge difference in smoothing that. So it looks brighter, it looks smoother. But a lot of times the reason people get discouraged with eye creams is because why do they buy an eye cream? Because they have lines in this area. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we call that nice name called crow's feet. Mm-hmm. Okay, so eye creams will not help with crow's feet. Might soften it a little bit, but what that is is dynamic muscle movement. So when you age, you've got a couple of t- different types of lines and wrinkles. Most of what you perceive as aging is going to be mm-hmm. about 95% or more is sun exposure. But dynamic muscle movement, if you, if you lived in a cave and you never went out into the sun, those are the things you get on the forehead, in here, here. Petis muscle pulls down, you get necklace lines. So that's a crease in the muscle. Some muscles overwork, and so you have a crease. And then when you put the skin over it, you see it as a line. And I'm not here to sell Botox, but what I got to tell you just realistically, that's where Botox comes in. Because Mm -hmm. what it does is it relaxes certain muscles, the other ones take over, and virtually within days, the line is gone. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really, you have to be very realistic about eye creams. And it all gets into all this stuff about, well, you know, I have, um, um, you know, my, my eyes get puffy. Well, that's a fat pad that's starting to herniate. How much is the eye cream going to be able to address that? Mm -hmm. So realistically, we can really make the eye area look uniform, brighter. We can can really focus on some of those fine lines and wrinkles and crepiness and make it look smoother, a little bit better contour. But it doesn't replace cosmetic surgery. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people who get injectables obviously are not going out and getting them right now. So (laughs) are there any products um, or specific ingredients that people should look for to help maintain this longevity between their treatments? Well, really. Um, and, you know, very well-known Durham told me this once. When you look at somebody's face, the first thing that you're going to notice is do they have clear skin? Is it clear and glowing skin? And then you might notice the contour of the face. So this is the perfect time when we're at home to focus even more on skin care. And what is really going to improve the skin itself? And that actually can go beyond. A lot of times people overlook some of the fine lines and things like that because it's the way that the light reflects off the skin. You don't see them the same way. Mm -hmm. Um, So Tatiana, our features editor, she wrote in a question. Which Jan Marini product would you take with you on a desert island if you could only take one? Oh, that's a great question. So I'll answer that two ways. If I count this as one product, <laughs> I would take this. But if you narrow it down even further, it would be BioClear. We have wow. a saying, all's clear with BioClear. Okay, that's amazing. Um, someone wrote in, I am using BioClear and I was wondering if it's enough for hyperpigmentation. BioClear, because glycolic acid and those, those things together and the azelaic acid, et cetera, can definitely make the skin look brighter and more uniform. But if you have discoloration, which could be, could be solar litigenes or sunspots, it could be discoloration that has to do with how you react to the sun from your ethnicity and your skin color. It could be melasma. You really see something specific for that. And it needs to be addressed every single day. And I would recommend Luminate, which is a combination Mm -hmm. of technology to address that along with a retinoid. And that has been presented in the Journal of Drugs and Dermatology. Half face comparison with prescription hydroquinone. Wow, okay. Um, What is the percentage of vitamin C in Siesta? Um, It is a lipid soluble C. It's um, ascorbyl palmitate, also known as L-ascorbic acid 6 palmitate. And it is 7%. A lot of questions about the adult acne and duality. How does that fit in? And I think you did mention this a little bit before with the kit. What, at what step should you apply that? So 
we call these products accelerators or things that you know focus on specific issues. And in the kit, BioClear is step three. Mm -hmm. And then after that is the hydrator, which is step five or step four. Mm -hmm. So everything else goes in between. We call it 3.5. So whether you're using duality or you're using okay. luminate or you're using rosaleaf, any of those things, that's where it goes in. Okay, that's great to know. Um, have you ever thought about putting BioClear lotion in a pump bottle like Siesta? Actually, um, we had it in a pump at one time, and it's a formula. And this, these are things that, that there's so much complexity that goes into this, but this is a product that does not work well in a pump hmm. because there can be micro crystallization that you can't see and you can't feel. But what it does is it keeps the pump from working. Hmm. Interesting. Well, there you go. Um, how do the products help rosacea? Are there any products in the line that you would recommend for rosacea? We have a product called Rosalie. Mm -hmm. Now, this is, this is a really complex disorder because it's a disease of basal motor instability. And, you know, mm -hmm. blood vessels are supposed to expand and contract, expand and contract. They're compromised. But one of the key issues with rosacea is you have an inflammatory protein. And it's a protein we all have. It's a good protein because if you wound yourself, it's going to help in the healing process. Now, you don't need to know this, but it's known as kisilicidin. So what you want to do is you want to be able to address kind of that inflammatory pathway. One of the reasons that doctors prescribe antibiotics for rosacea, not because there's a target organism, not because there's some kind of bacteria. It's because antibiotics are also anti-inflammatory. Mm. So we have a whole new age of anti-inflammatories and we really have something in the product that's a game changer that's different from anything else i've given that product to a, a friend of my family's who has rosacea and they said it was game changer for their skin so hopefully um whoever asked that question hopefully you can try it and it will help you as well um somebody is asking bioclear lotion and luminate lotion are both step three in different lines can they be used together at night so bioclear is step three and luminate goes is 3.5 so it goes on between bioclear and between whatever the hydrator is okay and then um last question i want to ask you is where i'm getting some um some feed in the chat about where people can find these products so where online are you available since people probably can't get to doctor's offices right now okay so if you go to the primary websites that work with professional products and let's say derm store lovelyskin.com and also, we are segregated on Amazon. And what I mean by that is that the Amazon product comes directly from us. These are not third-party resellers. And so those would be probably some of the primary places. And you can also go directly to our website. Well, thank you so much. This was wonderful. Um, you're always such a, a wealth of knowledge and such a supporter of new beauty and um, we just appreciate any time that we get with you. So I uh, thank you so much. And, um, you know, to everybody watching, definitely try the products, try the kit. Like I said, it has been our new beauty award winner for 10 years in a row. It is, it is incredible and it will change your skin. And also, um, we know that you can't probably get to the store to check out new beauty right now. Um, it is, it is at the stores, but we, if you DM us and you want an issue, we can send you a digital version. So we hope that you check that out as well. And, uh, thanks again, Jan. I hope to talk uh, to you soon and I hope you stay yeah. safe and healthy. Thank you so much. You asked great questions. This has been a lot of fun and I really appreciate it. And I hope we get to do it again. Thank you. Oh, that was Bye everybody. Fun. Bye everyone. Have a great day.